could, could thrill you with pride and uh, wonder. She was the quintessential symbol of America in the heyday of the 1950s, post-World War II. It carried the red, white, and blue colors, and when you passed it and looked at it, you got a feeling of patriotism, like, that's us. That's what we created. It was the most magic, beautiful, glorious, well-planned ship of all time. She just wasn't really a ship. She was like, like a city. It was a revelation, sort of like seeing a, a Van Gogh. This was it. Well, she once was the pride of America, the best of the ships on the sea. She sailed from New York. To just imagine New York City at that time, and the grandeur and the speed of New York and that pace put into a ship. She was built fast and strong, about a thousand feet long, and was powered by engines of steam. It was just the perfect design to do what she would do, carry a thousand passengers in comfort and in the greatest speed ever made in the Atlantic Ocean. Designed by the best of our architects, aluminum welded to steel. Everybody that sailed her felt that American experience, that New York experience, that United States experience. It had a confidence that the country had at the time. With a crew of 900, the beam was abundant to hold 12 decks above the keel. She was a rather unconventional ocean liner. She was actually designed to be a secret weapon. Even her hull design was top secret. This was the fastest ship in the world when it took the Blue Ribbon away from the Queen Mary. No ship that has been built before or since could ever match that record. And when the horn sounded, the world was astounded at just how fast she made the trip. She's been forgotten, and I think that needs to change. A good symbol for everybody to reflect back to how well we did things, even at that time. But she is still here. There's a new generation of people that are working to, uh, to save this ship. And now the procession is asking the question, can this great lady be saved? You can't replicate this. Once it's gone, it'll never come back. It's a great way to show respect for that era in our culture, in our society. It would be a restoration of American pride in something that should be very proud of. There's no way we can lose the SS United States. There never will be another ship like the Big U. Uh, someone said she's a lady in waiting. We hope that's true, because she has a lot more life in her. The word is out. We're saving the ship. During the heyday of the transatlantic liner, ships were ships of state. France had the longest, the British had the biggest, and we had the fastest and the SS United States certainly was our ship of state. She was indeed the flagship of the United States Merchant Marine, the entire United States fleet. She was in a way flagship of the world. Everybody knew this was the ship that was representing the United States of America. It's all American built. Everything on board is American. Every American through several generations have a stake in that ship. She certainly uh, represents everybody who came to have a blue ribbon life in the United States. People came from afar to, to see her in harbor. She has this sort of magic aura about her. She has these gorgeous good looks, which were all sucked in by a pretty face. She just appeals to you like that good friend that you always want to see. People knew right away when the United States was in because of those smokestacks. They are not straight up. They're slanted back. She had a rake on her that even when she was at the dock, she looked like she was ready to take off. It looks like it's moving when it's just standing still. The nose was very sharp, so almost stiletto was sharp. Her booms were silver coated. Her lifeboats were in perfect order. She was always immaculate. A lot of people think that it's the perfect blending of tradition and innovation in its design. An ocean liner is defined as a ship that moves people from one place to another, A to B. It can be continents or just two ports, and the United States was an ocean liner. This ship had a special purpose. It wasn't just taking people on a pleasure cruise. It was transporting businessmen, military personnel, diplomats, politicians, musicians, any number of people who had business to accomplish in Europe and uh, elsewhere. She carried a thousand crew members. She carried almost 2,000 passengers. Safety, speed, and style. This enormous sense of reliability, punctuality, American efficiency, that on-time quality. 
If I remember correctly, the United States was late twice in 17 years, and I'm not sure they'd even admit to the twice if there was anyone around from the company. As a transatlantic liner, no ship has surpassed this one for speed. And when she turned, turned those screws, I mean, she would just leap out of the water. This ship still holds the speed record. And all done with a huge degree of style and comfort, which we just don't see today. She had all those special ingredients that made her a very special ship. It's a perfect symbol of the 20th century, or what some people call the American century. A combination of brilliant engineering and uh, great seamanship, and I don't think we're going to see the likes of this ship again, uh, ever. I have a personal connection to the ship, obviously because my grandfather designed it. William Francis Gibbs was the preeminent naval architect of the 20th century. My grandfather had no formal training in naval architecture. Gibbs had been trained as an attorney but hated the law, he used to spend his summers on the Jersey Shore and saw all these big liners coming out of New York Harbor. But a, a nationalist, he realized they were all foreign, why don't we have a big ship? After practicing law for one miserable year, he decided he was going to design the biggest ship in the world. Uh, William Francis Gibbs got the job of converting a, a big German liner, the Vaudelin, into the Leviathan after the First World War and got the notice of the American government and began to design a series of very outstanding American passenger ships. I've been told that he designed 70 percent of the United States fleet during World War II. Victory ships, landing ships, troop ships, all sorts of vessels. 5,500 vessels overall, so World War II certainly kept him busy. Daddy felt that Gibbs and Cox was the finest engineering company that he knew of, so they, they got together on, on this dream of theirs and this meant that our country was about to build a superliner that would write headlines in American maritime history. And they said, let's us build a great ship, a fast ship, the greatest ship in the world. Let's take that blue ribbon from the Queen Mary who had held the speed record for all those years. On a cold February morning in 1950, we laid her keel. American know-how began building the greatest ship in the world. A ship that will give every American Another reason for pride in the accomplishments of his fellow workers and his country. The American public, through their taxes, uh, helped to build that ship and operate that ship. Even to this day, nothing has been built here that has eclipsed what went into that vessel. The United States was built to the highest specifications because the guardian of the whole project was the Pentagon. She was really built with it in mind that she would be a troop carrier. Should World War III come, we would need a big troop ship of our own. And instead of carrying 1,500 paying guests from New York, it could carry 15,000 troops to whatever theater they needed to go to. So efficient that she could transport an entire army division from San Francisco to Asia and return home without stopping for fuel, fresh water, or provisions. Something that the competitors, the Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Mary, couldn't come close to achieving. There was much guarded secrecy about her, the form of her hull, her top speed, the capability she would have. The Pentagon guarded all this seriously, which of course aroused the public, but at the same time made them very proud that we were building this very advanced liner. So this was a Navy-sponsored Boat. At Newport News, Virginia, the United States, the largest liner ever built in this country, dwarfs the regiment of workmen who take hours readying her for launching. The $70 million liner, second in size only to the two queens, was built in a dry dock because of her size. The shoring is knocked down, then a valve is turned, flooding the dock, and the great ship floats free. We finally caught our initial glimpse of the big ship. I think our first impression was her beauty. Then as we came near, we were overwhelmed by her great size. The afternoon at the shipyard was thrilling. The crowd was enormous. Photographers seemed to be all over the place. I had never seen William Francis look happier. He was attired in his khaki coveralls, sat down on the dock, and just looked. 30,000 persons attend the christening ceremony. See the wife of Senator Tom Connolly do the honors, launching the 51,000-ton vessel, the longest liner in the world, 990 feet. She'll also be the world's fastest, built to carry 2,000 passengers. She'll be in service in one year. Could not help thinking she must be a peace ship. 
She represents America at Peace. Visit SaveTheUnitedStates.org to take part in the restoration of the SS United States in a very personal way. From your web browser at SaveTheUnitedStates.org, you can explore a detailed rendering of the ship and zoom in to select the piece of the ship you wish to save for only $1 per square inch. You can personalize your part of the ship by posting your own images and words. In addition, you can even select badges and colors to make your piece of the ship stand out. Once your donation is complete, you can share your creation through Facebook, Twitter, or email, allowing friends and family to link directly to your piece of the ship and start their own journey. As you explore the ship, see who else has joined the effort, view their photos, and read about their personal connections to the United States. Search every inch of the ship and find interesting facts about various onboard locations and explore our interactive timeline to gain a better understanding of the ship's rich history. Going beyond your donation, anything you discover at SaveTheUnitedStates.org can be shared through social media to help spread the word. A simple $1 donation can save a specific piece of America's flagship for yourself, your children, or your grandchildren. You can start right now from your computer. Go to SaveTheUnitedStates.org to help restore America's flagship. Remember, SaveTheUnitedStates.org. Thank you. Thank you. 